Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Fred Lynch, and I'm trying to see if this thing is up or not. I think we are. I'm excited. It's 9.57. I just heard them out. We're at Life Community Church at the Bob Duncan Center. And so I heard Brother Chris just salute everybody. <clears throat> We're about to get started. Uh, I'm going to be preaching this morning in the pulpit on the behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Rich Martin. Big shouts to Rich and Tracy. They're out on vacation right now. I'm all amped up, man. I'm here in this little green room, and, and, and I'm ready to do it, man. I got a word in my soul I want to share, and, and I want to ask you guys to pray for Pray for us. I'm pray for me. Pray for this message. Pray that it get to the deliver, deliver it to the hearers, and that the hearers take the message and take it on to their loved ones, because that's really when true revival takes place. Not just at the preaching of a sermon, but the living out of a sermon. I want to share with you a little, a little bit of what we're going to be talking about. This uh, series right now is called Dig. And DIG stands for Diligently Inquiring God's Grace. I'm just going to give you a little piece. Um, our main scripture is Hosea uh, 10 and 12. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up the follow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord. And the message that, uh, and here's the premise, here's the premise that we're talking about is simply this, is that your greatest treasure is inside you and the entire world can have it. If you can dig, I see a hair on the screen. I'm trying to get the hair off the screen. Help me, Jesus. And the message that we're going to share today is simply called Mark the Spot. And we're going to come from Matthew 13, 44. Listen to this. I just want hope this encourages you. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy... Over it, he goes and sells all that he has to buy the field. So we're going to talk about selling all that you have to buy the field. In the process of walking exegetically through this verse, uh, we believe in that God's just going to do some great things in that. But I want to just kind of turn your attention to the end and think about this. He talks about buying the field. And, and I'm going to share something what I like to call an anti-parable. In other words, I want to take and tag on to that parable, but hopefully with artistic uh, liberty. And I want to talk about something as simply this. What if this guy goes and buys this field, but then he forgets where he hid the treasure? If he does that, then he'll spend all of his life digging holes in that field, never to truly find the treasure again. So what you've got to simply do is you've got to know how to really mark the spot. And mark the spot simply means mapping out the spot, first of all, which it takes going into God's Word and finding out what He says about you and making a decision. Decision is the big word here. Folks, I want to encourage you to make a decision in your life. If God said what He said about you, then you have to decide. Now, I love that word, decision. That is a Latin word. The word scission is the same where we get the word scissor from, which simply means cut off. Look, folks, listen to me real good. You've got to cut some things off that are hindering your way. Lay aside every weight. Cut it off. Snip, snip. That's the word for you today. Cut things off that are in your way and that are in the way of what God promised for you. Make a decision <clears throat> to follow what God said about you and do that. And then the next part is I'm going to talk about mandating the spot. Put a mand or a demand on the gifting that is on the inside of you. Put a demand, and finally, Christ ultimately is who marks the spots. Hey, lift us up. Pray for us. I pray that God does a great thing in this session, and I'll hopefully afterwards come and talk to you. They're calling me out there. Got to go. God bless.